In this video today, I'm gonna to show you all my Serato DJ Pro settings. A lot of DJs don't know about all the settings, so I'm gonna go through every single one. I'm gonna show you why I select certain settings and also explain them so you know what each one does and then you can apply them in your Serato DJ Pro settings. This is gonna be in Serato 2.5.7. The same things will probably apply in other versions, but there might be things missing in your versions that are in my version. So just take that into consideration. With that being said, let's get into the video. What's going on people? I go by the name of DJ CB and on this channel, we help bedroom DJ transition over to a club DJ. If you like the sound of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to hit that bell notification to get notified every single time I post a video. Right, so if we open up the settings in Serato DJ Pro, we're going to be coming to this window. What I'm also going to do is turn on the tool tips for this video so you can also see the explanation for each of the settings. The first section we're going to cover is control preferences. So the first one is playback keys use shift. I don't have this turned on, but basically what it is is Say for example, you're DJing and you accidentally press the Q button on your keyboard. What this will do is make your track play backwards. We've all been in this scenario where we've been typing on our computer, accidentally press Q, your music's been going reverse and you don't know how to change it back. If you apply this setting, you have to press Shift then Q for the reverse to happen. This is a way to kind of safeguard yourself by not pressing the key accidentally. If you happen to press Q with this switched on, nothing will happen. So that's just the first setting that you might want to apply just to make sure that you don't do anything accidental in your sets. The next thing I don't have turned on is lock playing deck. What this means is if you have it turned on and you have a track playing on the second deck and you accidentally try load a track on the second deck, the track won't load. So you might have a track playing on deck two, then you want to go load a track on deck one, but you accidentally do it to deck two. This will also safeguard you from making any mistakes. I don't have it switched on because I don't wanna have to think and press stop on a track and then load the track. I just wanna just load the track without even thinking. I mix quite fast when I'm DJing, so I don't wanna to have to stop a track, then load it, it just slows me down. But you might wanna safeguard yourself going forward, so you might wanna check this setting. This setting I don't have to turn on either, sorting cues and loops chronologically. I don't feel the need that I have to do that, so I don't have that switched on. Enabling hot cues I have switched on. With this setting turned on, you can press the one, two, three, four, up all the way up until zero, and you can set cue points in your Serato. Track end warning I have turned on. Basically what this means is when a track is about 20 seconds from the end on Serato, the deck on the screen will actually start flashing. This pretty much means that you need to change the song because it's about to end. So the next setting is disable needle search during playback. Basically on your CDJ, you have like a needle search which you can kind of hover along and move the position of the track. If you have this switched on, it won't allow you to do that. I don't have it switched on because when I'm queuing up a track, sometimes I like to scan through the track and see where I actually want to drop it. You might want to safeguard yourself just in case you accidentally press the needle search on your CDJ. I don't know, but I don't have it switched on. The next setting under control preferences is show beat jump controls. It was only this year I started using beat jump in Serato. A lot of DJs used to tell me about it, but I never ever used it. Ever since I found this feature on Serato, I have been using it consistently every single set. Another thing under control preferences is use auto gain. I'll be perfectly honest, I have no idea what this means. If you do know what this means, you can explain this in the comments down below. I just have it checked on because it's defaulted on. I don't know anything about these settings, but if anyone does, please feel free to explain it down in the comments down below. The break-in section under control preferences, I actually control the break-in stuff on my CDJs, but if you don't have CDJs and you have a controller, you can actually sort out the break-in start times and stop times in Serato. So you can move this bar up and then it will change the start time. Also, you can move it up on here and you can change the stop time. So the next section under the settings is on song load. Basically, I have all these checked and I'm gonna explain each one. So play from start, if you have this checked, obviously when you load the track, it's gonna play from start. If you don't have it checked, I believe what it will do is, if you don't have this setting enabled, the track will play from the same point as the track currently loaded. So I do suggest that you have this turn on because when you load a track, you kind of want it to be from the start and then obviously you can just move the track wherever you want it after that. Instant doubles I have turned on. I use instant doubles every single set. Instant doubles is a great feature to use, especially if one of the CDJs is not working. I've had times where I've gone to a set and the CDJ on the left hand side doesn't work. If I use instant doubles, I don't need to use that left deck anymore. I can just use the right deck, instant double over and then carry on. This is a great feature to know and it's also a good backup feature to know as well. If you want me to do a video on instant doubles or knowing how to play using one CDJ, let me know in the comments down below. Also 
another thing that I have checked is play song from the first cue point. This is really good for DJs that, that do a lot of routines, but I have this turned on because when you load a track, you kind of want to run from the first cue point. First cue point is normally the start of the song. So I do suggest that you have this turned on. Virtual deck speed, 32 RPM and 45 RPM. From my experience with my Rain 12s, I believe if you have 45 RPM turned on, the deck will move faster, which will make the, the song speed up even more. Um, sync mode, they have three different sync modes. One is off, one is simple sync, and one is smart sync. Um, I have the smart sync turned on just because it allows me to use some of the features like edit beat grid and stuff like that. I suggest that you go into Serato and have a look at the different sync options and then choose whichever one suits you. So under audio, there's not much in here. You just have USB buffer size. I've just kept it as the default 5ms. I think if you have a better performing computer, you can actually move this over to one, but I've just kept it as the default. I haven't seen any latency or any problems with mine being at five, so I haven't changed it. Next one is library. So if we start at the top, we have show iTunes library turned on. If you're using iTunes to manage your music, you wanna have this turned on. This will show all the iTunes library in your Serato so you can actually use your playlist in iTunes and play from then. Protect library, what this means is if you have this checked on and you try and delete a crate or something like that, it will show you a message saying, we can't delete this because your library is protected or something along them lines. This is a great thing if you're DJing, you DJ quite quick, you do a lot of things quick on the keyboard, you don't want to accidentally delete a crate mid set. So if you click this, you're kind of just safeguarding yourself again. Custom crate columns, if you have this switched off and you turn off, I don't know, the artist column in your library, it will apply it to every single crate that you have in your Serato. But if you have this checked and you have a crate called, I don't know, warm up and you get rid of the artist, the title, it will only apply to that one crate. I hope that makes sense. If you wanna read this, you can pause the video, have a read through that, but I think I've explained it correctly. Center on selected songs. So basically when you're scrolling up and down your library, the song that you have selected will always be in the middle. I'll show a demonstration on the screen right now. Include sub crate tracks. So if, for example, you have a sub crate in Serato, so for example, for me, I have warm up, then I have R&B warm up, then I have UK warm up and hip hop warm up. If I don't have this selected and I click the overall warm up folder, it won't show me the tracks that are in the R&B, UK and hip hop. It will just show me the tracks that are in the warm up folder. So I do suggest that you have this clicked because you can see all the tracks in your sub crates from that overall folder. Another setting in here is play track color. So basically, when you've played a track you can decide what color it's going to be so you have blue gray or none i have it set as blue so i know that any blue tracks in my library i've already played them reset play tracks so say for example you're playing a set but you want to just reset everything so you don't see any blue tracks you can click this and it will clear all your history so you won't see any blue tracks in your serato a good feature i have here is reset play tracks on exit when you exit serato it will actually clear your history so when you open it back up again you won't see any blue tracks you'll start from fresh. Enable play count in Serato, I don't have switched on. I don't really care about how many times I've played a track. I'm not going to go through my library and see I'm not gonna go through my library and be like, oh, there's a track that I haven't played before. Let me delete it because it's got a zero play count. I just have this switched off. I don't feel the need to have it, but some DJs might wanna have that. Library text size. Again, you can have this as big or small as you want. I like to have it this size because it allows me to have more information on the screen. But sometimes if I'm feeling tired at a set, I do increase the size because when I'm tired, my eyes get a bit blurry. And if it's small writing, it's actually hard for me to see on the screen. So yeah, if I'm tired, I do increase it. But most of the time I have it at this size. If I'm at home sorting out my music library, I actually have it down to the smallest setting so I can see a lot more in my library and organize a lot more. Display, um, there's a few things on here. So show tempo matching display. I don't know what this is. The tempo matching display is visible in the vertical or horizontal view modes. Match the peaks to align the tempo of playing tracks. I actually don't have a clue what that means. Um, so I don't have it checked. Hide track and artist. If you check this, you actually won't see the track or the artist of the, the track that's currently playing. Deck BPM display. I have it as one decimal place. Maximum screen updates per second. I have this as default again. I don't know what this means. Some of these settings I just keep as default because I don't want to change anything and mess up anything. Everything's been working for me for the past four years I've been DJing, so I haven't changed anything. High res screen display. I have this turned on. I think this option came in when Serato DJ Pro came out. It just makes your Serato DJ Pro look a lot more high resolution. If you have it turned off, it doesn't look that great. Once 
once you've gone to this, you literally cannot go back because the other version looks terrible. Send usage data to Serato. I believe that this is just a way to send errors and stuff to Serato so they can fix bugs or anything that comes through on Serato. The description's in front of you there, so have a look at that. Music streaming, I don't have any of my streaming turned on because I don't feel the need to stream from BeatSource Pro. If you use them features, obviously you need to have this turned on, but I don't feel the need to stream from any of these services. Effects, here is just um, a bunch of the effects. I don't really use the Serato effects. Um, I, I mostly use the Pioneer effects on my DJM S9, or if I'm at a set and they have a DJM 900 Nexus or a 900 Nexus 2, I will use the effects on there. I don't really use the inbuilt Serato effects. And yeah, that's me going through my Serato DJ Pro settings. Some of them I don't know, that's why I've kept them as default. But hopefully I explained it well enough so you lot can go into your Serato DJ Pro and change your settings to match mine, or change your settings to just match your preferences. A lot of DJs don't know what each one does, so hopefully I've explained it enough in this video. Like I I said I'm not the most experienced person with the Serato DJ Pro settings I just use the settings that are best for me with that being said I hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up if you haven't done so already make sure you hit that subscribe button down below also if you want six months at 25% off on Mixcloud Pro I'm going to leave a link down in the description this link will take you to a checkout which will apply 25% off for the next six months also if you're in need of any sound effects on Serato DJ Pro I actually said a sound effect pack on Fiverr for five pounds in that pack you get 158 sound effects that you can use in your Serato DJ Pro. Make sure you check the link down in the description. Also don't forget to follow me on Instagram at DJC underscore B. I post there regularly. With that being said, I go by the name of DJCB and we're out.